I make this video once a year where I share the curriculum we're planning on using for the upcoming school year, how we went about planning, and where I keep it, homeschool organization. I sat down here to film like 20 minutes ago and I was pulling everything out and I was like, this is everything I want to use this year. I don't, you know, like aside from books, this is, this is the curriculum that I'm planning on using as a guide this year. And I realized that I was sitting below my homeschool closet, which I'd already cleaned out a few months ago and organized. I have accessed that closet a couple of times in the last month and knew exactly what I was looking for and where it was. So my organization definitely worked out for me when I went through that declutter and purge and organization of our homeschool supplies in that closet that worked for me. And I was sitting here like, wait a minute, am I even gonna use that stuff? So I went up there and I assessed what I had in there, what I wanted to still hang on to for another school year, or at least for the time being, and what I wanted to let go of. So I'm actually gonna start this video with a mini declutter of homeschool supplies I know I don't need to hang on to. So I filmed that, let me share that with you now. So I already know right off the top, this whole stack we are not gonna use, and I'm, I'm just gonna get rid of. We have a homeschool co-op table where people can take what they want. I also might just put it up on Facebook Marketplace for free to um, declutter it from my house. So uh, this whole stack is coming out. Let me show you the before, before I start taking things out. This is a music stand. We're just not currently using it. I'm going to keep that. And then some empty bins up there. This puzzle is missing pieces. I'm not even sure why I put it back in there. I was hoping the pieces would turn up, but they didn't. And I'm going to be real. So I'm just going to start taking stuff out. My youngest is... Okay. Oh, that's... That was heavy. My youngest is at a first grade math level. So anything kindergarten can go. Horizons is... Um, not the pace that my younger two learn and my oldest is past this as well so i i'm just gonna i'm gonna let those go these are all math concepts that are coming up so i can leave those bob books my kids my younger two kids are reading through my youngest is reading and will enjoy these this year so all that reading pre the pre-reading level that can go because we finished it. I'll explode the code four is next for my oldest. Okay, these are all things that we will, I can use in the coming year. This is science. I'm just gonna leave that alone. We are choosing a different science curriculum for now. We're not, this is all unit studies. That's how I used to do it. I will share with you what we're using for science. This is just paper. I mean, this is just, oh, these are workbooks. Wait a minute, what? I'm going to get rid of these. I'm going to keep the Bob books, but my kids didn't really like the the workbook. We like the Bob books. Oh, here's another one. Lovely. They stopped using this. I love this wooden board for math, but they just stopped using it. And we have all these coins for it. I'm going to give it thought, but I, I, I'm going to live with the decision to get rid of this. I will probably sell it with the coins, but I'm just gonna live with that decision for a little bit. I've decided to let go, but I'm not ready to get it out of my house. So I, whereas I've decided to let go of that and I'm ready to get it out of the house. Uh, for now, this is solid. I feel good about this. I feel fine about this. So I got rid of a few things. I started with a declutter. That was good, that was good. This is what I'm getting, this is what I'm going to get rid of. Getting rid of things I know I'm not going to use that my kids didn't like, that they've outgrown, is it, it lightened the way I feel about this now. To carry forward just things I, I plan on using as supplemental or I know might be good or we haven't tried yet. Before I roll into sharing the curriculum, I would like to share with you the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. It's an online learning community with thousands of classes. I have watched classes on gardening, 
finance, interior design, minimalism, decluttering, organization, and I showed my daughter a watercolor class that's in Skillshare and she was over the moon. And she uh, really enjoyed this class series from M. Wynn, in which she teaches kids, it's Art for Kids, that's the series name, she teaches kids how to trawl and watercolor paint. So far she's taken the class on the mouse and the leprechaun and she had such confidence in how the class was structured and guided her through creating. The first 1,000 people to click the link in my description box for Skillshare are going to get a one month free trial. It is free to check it out. If you've got kids who love art, check out that M. Wynn class. There's a lot of, uh, there's thousands of classes on there. So you might find something that supports your hobbies or your interests or gives you an opportunity to learn something new. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I have three kids, ages eight, seven, and five at the start of the school year. That will be third grade, second grade, and kindergarten in our house. I live in the state of Maryland and I am responsible for eight subjects uh, to each grade. And that can look like an unschooling approach or it can look like a daily workbook approach or anywhere in between. I just have to show and demonstrate progressive learning in each of the eight subjects math, English, health, art, music, PE, social studies, and science. And so that's what you see before you. This is the kids cart, kids school cart, and then this is my teacher cart. So all of the teacher's guides, the supplies that I don't want the kids to touch, that's all on here. And then organization wise, each of my kids has a star bin. And the color of the star tells them which bin is theirs. For the first time this year, I'm using Homeschool Planet. My friend Colleen at Our Blessed Life, I'll leave a link for her down there as well. She has an excellent homeschool channel. She uses Homeschool Planet, has done quite a number of reviews and talked about it at length. And so I got on board and I will tell you that I love it. I pay for it. I mapped out the year. So with uh, Homeschool Planet, I was able to take each curriculum, plug in the number of lessons, our days off, um, how many times a week I wanted to teach that subject and auto calculated and mapped out the year for me per kid. Um, and so I keep flashing this up. This is my third graders. This is, if we did every subject every day, that's what this would look like. This is a guide for me to use to plan each week. We plan a week at a time. We use these assignment books. I just got these off of Amazon and the kids decorate their own. We're just gonna keep on using the one from last year. And I plan each week by writing out what's to be done. And I use Homeschool Planet as my guide and of where we would be if we were on track with the curriculum. That's where this is. This just allows for flexibility. So maybe it's somebody's birthday and I just know we're not doing school. Maybe we're going on a field trip. I know we're not doing school. I can map it out and have flexibility. So I can say, okay, um, you know, we're supposed to be on lesson 17 for math. We're actually on lesson 16. Maybe we can play catch up this week or we'll just calibrate as we go. And my son thrives with this. I discovered this in his second grade year last year. He thrives with knowing exactly what his week is supposed to look like and all the things that are being expected of him. Sometimes he's a fast finisher and he finishes by Wednesday, five days of work. He has off Thursday and Friday, he loves it. And then he can just play learning games on the iPad or the computer for reading eggs or math seeds and have two days off where he doesn't have to come and sit and do school. So that's how we roll. Now let's talk about third grade. This is all of his stuff for third grade, except for science. So I will start with science. Science, we are using Science Shepherd. It's a video-based curriculum, and it comes with a workbook that you can choose to match each level of kid. So we watch the video, it's between two and five minutes usually. We watch the video together on the couch. Each one of my kids has a workbook that goes along with their level. So my second grader and my kindergartner have level A and my third grader has level B. They all watch the same video, but they answer different questions in the workbook about the, about the day or about the lesson. So that's science, science effort. We just do that together. We do it every day because it's just video based and it's easy. If we skip a day, we just watch two videos and do two worksheets. Right now, I'm just gonna disclaimer. I do not force my children to complete 
worksheets. Uh, I might do a little more pressure in third grade to finish or at least go for the worksheet, but in second grade and kindergarten, if they if it, the worksheet vibe is not happening that day, that's okay with me. We'll just talk about it. They watch the video. I've logged it in their assignment book and I check the box because it's not, I've learned that it's not worth the struggle to force a young child to do a worksheet. As much as I want the uh, demonstration of learning, I don't need it. It can be vocal learning and they can tell me what they remembered or what they liked about the video. And I note that in their book. And I note that for the portfolio because in the state of Maryland, I have to keep a portfolio for every child for every subject. So that's 24 sections I will be maintaining this year. And all I need to show is growth. And if sometimes we fill out a worksheet in kindergarten in science, great. If sometimes we don't, that's okay too. Let's talk about my favorite subject and my third graders favorite subject. Social, social studies. Social studies is very robust this year for third grade. So I have this as a guide for him and I, 180 days of social studies for grade three. It's, it would be a daily worksheet and it says week 17, day five. It's a daily worksheet. If we discuss this or watch a video on the concept instead, I'm okay with that. Again, I don't force worksheets. I use them as a guide. If he completes it, that's great. He's a fast finisher and he needs to be kept busy or he gets loud and distracting for the rest of us. So if he finishes a subject early, he could, he could catch up on worksheets. So we're doing 180 days of social studies for third grade. This is to just to make sure that I have covered the concepts of social studies, uh, civics, geography, uh, government, that a third grader might be expected to have had exposure to. For history, we are, we're gonna do America's history. We're gonna do America's story one. This is his workbook. And then I have a teacher's guide to go along with it. And, and each week of America's story covers a topic. I have paired an independent reader along with each week for him because he's a huge reader and he needs time. He needs to fill his, his day because he's a fast finisher. So I have assigned an independent reader for each week of history that we cover in here. Here we go. So um, I, will, I will write up a blog post and leave it linked below of, of resources and links for everything that you are seeing in here. If you're a homeschool parent that's shopping or if you're just curious, go to that blog post and it'll take you to all of the links for this. But for instance, chapter one, we're reading Sign of the Beaver. Chapter two, which would be week two, where he's gonna read Who Was Leif Erikson? Chapter three, The Story of Columbus, uh, provided by DK, the publisher. My library had most of those, so we'll just get those for each week that he is on. For current events in social studies, we watch CNN 10, my third grader and I, sometimes my second grader and kindergartner watch peripherally, <laughs> um, but my third grader loves that channel and that news program. And it gives us an opportunity to talk about things that are going on in the world. And then we're also gonna cover um, geography, presidents and United States. So for geography, I just have this maps and skills grade three through six workbook that I tore apart in a prior year. We're not gonna start that until we start talking about um, the 50 states, and then we're gonna cover US geography. I think it's chapter 17. We start talking about the US states. And uh, so we'll do a state study for each week. We'll talk about US geography, states and capitals. We'll start doing that, maybe a state or two a week. And then chapter 18 starts the presidents. So we're gonna do a president's integration um, and we'll just talk, we'll just go chronologically and look at the presidents. I'm not gonna ask him to memorize the presidents. We have a US state puzzle that we often put together. We have a world puzzle, so we do world geography. And then on their iPads, they have learning games for stack the states and stack the countries. Math. Math for him will be primary mathematics 4A. We've ar we already started this book, so we'll be continuing to pull this into third grade. He started this in second grade. We'll be continuing to pull that in. And I also have the test guide, additional practice for any concepts that he needs some extra work on. Um, and so that's all goes together. And then the teacher guide, which is just ridiculously sized. I mean, come on. 
this has a, it's mapped out day by day what you can cover. And so you can see like when to do your teacher assessments and um, that's, that's all mapped out. And then for math, he also plays Prodigy Math on the computer. And that gives me a report card every week of, of concepts he's working on, concepts he's practicing, concepts he needs extra practice for. And the concepts he needs extra practice for, they create printables for you if that's your thing. You can do that too. Uh, okay. Um, English. We are going to do, let me just grab everything for English all at once. Okay. He's just going to keep on using his handwriting without tears, printing power. We usually do this together as a group. Uh, we call it morning collective where we do Bible and handwriting, any of the read alouds that we're currently having as a family that all happens at morning collective. That's usually right after breakfast or part of breakfast and kicks off our school day. He's gonna continue with his handwriting practice and printing power. We're going to be doing uh, spelling every day in the form of a worksheet. If he's not vibing with the worksheet, I'm okay with oral spelling for the day. And I'll just write that as a note that we did oral that day. Um, I will be pressuring him to do some writing so that he is practicing his spelling by physically writing. And this is structured, I just mapped it out for a daily thing. So it's day one, you do this week's words. Day two is visual memory. Day three is word meaning. Day four is word study. And day five is a spelling test. And then in the beginning, it's got all the words that it's mapping out for third grade. We're gonna be continuing Explode the Code. He's been doing this for three years. This is book three. And um, we are about halfway through. I also am adding in Beyond the Code to have a level, level of reading skills and comprehension. And uh, he, I chose book two for him to make sure it's foundational. And then for grammar, we're gonna be using Grammar Island. We're continuing with the Michael Clay Thompson curriculum. He finished Poodle Knows What and Poodle and the Blue Mountain Monster, which were the precursors to this level one program for grammar. That's English. For health, which is a prior, required subject, we're gonna do one page a week in this workbook, Healthy Habits for, kid, for Healthy Kids. And it will be, the worksheet is the concept or topic guide. If we watch a video instead and we talk about it, that's fine too. So art for him, I have um, two things. And my approach with him is uh, exposure. Sometimes he does the art work with us. So for him, I, I am reusing the four books that I used last year, Get Into Art Places, people, animals, and then the first one. I have a link below for how we do art. Um, it's an old blog post, but we're repeating that this year. Um, these books study an artist and a painting and then give you a project, an arts and crafts project that you can do that uh, extends the learning. My daughter always does the extension. <laughs> she loves art. My third grader does not. Um, and then I have this stack of famous paintings. I'm, I will charge him with picking a card and then researching it because third grade is gonna be a little more research-based and he can research it using the library uh, and the computer and maybe just give me um, a two sentence summary of the painting and what he learned. Music, we're using Squilt. It comes with uh, two, webinar, two live webinars each month and then a monthly calendar and unit studies and access to the entire library. So I just make sure that I have the things available to support the things that they enjoy doing in school. Bible. We have this, my illustrated Bible for beginner readers. All three of my children can read this book and they just take turns reading the next chapter out loud to each other and that's Bible. They also have a um, Sunday school program that they go through with our church. I think that's everything for him. Uh, PE, physical education in the state of Maryland is a required subject. However, we do three sports year round, swim, gymnastics, and karate, he does. And then he also has baseball. So we have PE covered. Oh, one more thing I forgot. For my third grader, we're adding in IEW's style and structure, uh, year one, level A. Uh, it has worked for five days of the week. If he does it all in one day, good on him. And it's a sit down video based program that he does independently. So he sits at the computer and plays the video for the week and then does the work for the week. 
And it also, I also bought um, Nose Tree to go along with it. And in each one of these lessons, it tells you which page in Nose Tree to do. And this is Fix It Grammar. We've already done a few of these. He, he likes this. He likes being able to correct the sentence and then rewrite it properly. He enjoys that because um, he actually really likes to write. He writes stories, he writes movie scripts. And so I thought this would be a really great way to support his interest in that. Okay, second grade, our red star bin. She is, let's just go from the top. I also have her year mapped out in Homeschool Planet as a guide for me. We're gonna continue using level one, all about reading with her. Uh, my kindergartner is also doing this, so I actually teach the same lesson at the same time to both of them to cover it. It's actually great that they sort of came together. And that's one of the things I, one of the things I just love about homeschool is I can meet each kid where they are. And two of my kids happen to be right at the same level right now, so we're doing this. If one of them surges ahead or falls behind, then I would split lessons and I'd have two bookmarks, but that's okay. So we're doing, um, this and then in the activities that go along with this. There's not a lot of writing in this. There's not any writing in this. The activities that go along with this, I put inside sleeves inside a big two inch binder. So we just have that out and uh, my younger two do that. She's gonna be doing, we're gonna give this a shot. Spelling, grade two. Same Evan Moore workbook, uh, same style. Here's the words, here's the practice, visual memory, et cetera, spelling test. We're gonna give this a try for her. Explode the Code 1. She's going to finish this book and move into Explode the Code 2. Uh, I have Beyond the Code 1 for her. And she just finished the yellow book for handwriting with Elsa Tears. So I got her the next one, the green one. So she's going to start that. And she also asked to learn cursive. And so I got her this. Her health, same thing page a week. And for social studies for her, I'm only doing this grade two, level two, 180 days of social studies. Uh, but ultimately I'm shooting for the concepts. So as long as she and I can talk about the concept or watch a video on it, I'm okay with that. For music, she'll be doing squilt because she likes it. She loves it. And for art, she does um, Skillshare, <laughs> Skillshare classes that we find for her, for kids online. And then um, the Get Into Art program I'm repeating, she does all of the crafts for that. She really, really enjoys it. For PE, for my second grader, she does karate, gymnastics, and swim year-round. She also does baseball. Okay, my kindergartner. I mapped out his lessons for kindergarten, but now I've done kindergarten two times, and I know to take it easy. <laughs> in kindergarten and not push worksheets and pressure, especially because he can already read and he's at a first grade math level. I don't have to push him. He just peripherally advanced by being a part of our school program and by me focusing on letter sounds and uh, some apps that he really likes, like reading eggs really helped him. Okay, so for social studies, 180 days, this is just a guide for me to be able to give him some exposure about community and civics and I'm not expecting him to know the branches of the government in kindergarten. Health, page a week. English, we're doing the all about reading. Right now he happens to be in step with um, my daughter, so we're doing that together. I got him Explode the Code. He actually asked for it. He saw the way my older two were doing Explode the Code and he wanted his own, of course. Uh, he just finished the orange book last year, uh, last month for the year. And so I got him the next one, the yellow one. And uh, so he'll be doing that. For math, he thrives with primary mathematics right now. We tried Horizons, it didn't work for him. And he really enjoys this. He will sit and do 10 pages of math. He loves math. So uh, that's how we ended up at 1A uh, in the pre-K level. So he's just gonna continue using this. Um, art, so now he will have to have something uh, for the portfolio for art and music. So I'm gonna approach it the same way I approach my other son. It's exposure and fun crafts. 
Um, and if he participates, great. We listen to a lot of different music in our house anyway, so he's getting a lot of music appreciation and exposure in that way uh, for kindergarten. So I just make notes for the portfolio. I take pictures of things that might uh, work towards music and art, and it work, that works fine for me. I'm pretty lax when it comes to kindergarten, and we do a lot of board games with him, a lot of learning board games. Sleeping Queens, Zoom, Race to Planet X, Potato Pirates, King Domino, Clumsy Thief. So those are, those are math games that I play with him all the time. Um, and that counts as school for us in kindergarten. And I take pictures of that and I list that in his portfolio. Thanks for watching. And here's another video. Wait. 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 Wait.